Hello, good evening. Nice to see you, boys. Um, the usual three match uh, forecast with a celeb, and I've got a very special one off guest tonight. I think you'll recognize him, number nine legend, Malcolm McDonald. <laughs> Malcolm, no, no, with Manchester United, left Newcastle with the best defensive record in the whole of the Premier League. Nine goals conceded in ten games. I can remember when it was nine goals conceded in two games with a certain steep boost. But that's a different thing. Those days are gone. Thank God for that. Um, so nine goals in ten games, only one defeat in ten games. And that's the lowest number of defeats. Once Manchester City lost to Liverpool, they were the only unbeaten side. So that's two records Newcastle going to this game with. That's pretty impressive. Not only impressive, John, I think it's well deserved as well, by the way, that they're playing. Um, but yes, very, very impressive indeed. Um, and what a turnaround, and it's all happened so quickly. I think last season Newcastle conceded 60 odd goals, and the season before that it was 80 odd. Um, and, uh, and now here we are, um, uh, more than a quarter of the way through the season, and, and we've only let in single figures still. It's quite remarkable, but they look good at the back. You know, it, it, this is no. Uh, it, it, this is no luck about it at all. This is some real hard work by the players involved um, and by the manager and the coaches. Um, well done to them. And, and let's, let's hope we keep that coming because um, all of a sudden, um, the games that you would have lost last season, you're going to get at the very worst a point out of it. Um, and, and there's nothing better for a forward than to know that back there, they're keeping it tight, that they're, uh, they're keeping chances to an absolute minimum, um, and, uh, and the, the pressure isn't so much on the forwards to score. And for me, that's always easier to go and score yeah. without that pressure, yeah. If we look, Manchester United not not, um, I mean, there's only you and Kabai weren't there since he didn't build his wall. I mean, I remember that. I was, I was there. Yeah, the love of my life. I'm just who's, who left Mrs. Kabai in? Who's the love of my life? Um, yeah, yeah, the love of my life is well back then. Um, so anyway, not, not. And, you know, ever since the distance we've come in so quick, as you were saying, Malcolm, you know, they're just slightly disappointed that we didn't win because in the first half, Jordan had a couple of great chances, especially the second one. Uh, okay, Rashford had a chance at the end, but uh, if Big Joe put that one away, they would have been dead. And we played well and we kept a clean sheet. Uh, the difference now is, having come back home and Spurs away at the weekend, they need to win this one, Mark. Yeah, we do. I agree. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think um, hugely important that, uh, that, that we get another three points at home. And, uh, and with the kind of record that Newcastle are getting, you know, if, if, we, can, if we can maintain this run of, of wins at home, so you, you're winning at home, you're drawing away, and you've got every chance of winning the title doing that. Um, and, and I think there's... It's not just what you see on the pitch, but I think it's the general feeling of utter confidence in the way that that, that, that back line and the midfield, the way that they just deal with everything. And it's it's all done so calmly. They, they, they've got all the confidence in the, in the world in each other. And by heavens, you can see, uh, you can see and feel that. And, and the confidence of the side is just growing growing and uh, well may continue to grow and and of course for, for the guys up front you know uh, um, with Wilson back in the side now things will happen up there in in the opponent's box a lot more than when Wilson isn't there so uh, and who knows I I've, I've watched Everton um, at, at the weekend 
And I don't remember them having a shot on target. At Spurs, really. Yeah, at Spurs. I don't remember them having a shot at all on target. And so they had a lot of the ball against Spurs, in all fairness, but they didn't produce anything of any significance or danger in any way whatsoever. And so, uh, you know, that's all of those stats, that will be in front of the players before the game tonight. If I have a slight worry on a home game, Mark, and it's, if it's the bench, if we have to change the way a game's going, uh, not to have Maxi available and not to have Isaac available, off the bench even, coming, both coming back from England, it's a heck of a blow that they both had relapses. I mean, Isaac, we're not going to see him until after the World Cup. Hopefully Maxi will come just before that. But that's a, a double blow because Maxi was on the suspension, got on last time, the four man knew, and is now out of the reckoning. Isaac's out of the reckoning. 60 million and we looked so long and hard to get back up to Wilson and he's gone after three games for a significant time. It's not only Wilson that's out for a time, it's he's actually deputy that's out for a time now. Uh, when I look at the bench and think if we have to change something during the match, if it was nil nil after an hour, heaven forbid, but then two guys that could significantly change it are not available. So it does put a lot of onus onto Wilson and back up onto uh, Almiran or whoever the other wing is because I'm certain he's going to shuffle his side because of three matches in eight days. But uh, is there a slight concern goals-wise, Malcolm? Well, um, yes to a degree, but, uh, and, and, and I have to say, I hold my hands up because I've been hugely critical of Almiran, but all of a sudden, um, since Wilson came back into the side, Almiron, instead of running just to the corner flag all the time, he's, he's suddenly turned it and he's, he's wanting to get in the box and go and play with Wilson. And all, and all of a sudden, um, from, a, from a, a lightning quick negative player um, for us, he's suddenly become a real threat, a danger, um, and, and the fact that he scored two goals in the last home game, that's great, that's terrific, that, that will lift his confidence, and so, um, and Wilson didn't score, but I thought Wilson was absolutely brilliant, he was, um, he was taking defenders wherever he wanted to take them, and he was making space for other people, and, and I saw more players wanting to get into the penalty area, before Wilson got back into the side, we could spend five or ten minutes without a black and white shirt in the opposing penalty area. Um, it, 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 was, it was quite silly um, to watch at times, but Wilson, he brings threat into the side. And not only is he threatening, but he makes others around him threatening as well. And so it'll be interesting tonight. You know, and, I, and if I were... Um, Eddie Howe, I would be saying, come on, you get out there, and, and, and we, we've got the best defensive record, now, all of you guys, you start getting your goals record, up and up and up and up, that's what we want you to work on, and uh, so I, I want to see players shooting as much as possible, you know, and, and I've always worked by the theory that uh, if you're going to score, you've got to miss, so don't let the misses put you off. Don't let them detrimentally affect you in any way. I always, I, if I missed, that made me more confident about getting the next goal. Um, and, and, I, and that's how I'd like the players to be thinking these days. And I think that they do. I think that the manager, he, he, he instills a great confidence into the players. You, you can see the difference between now and 12 months ago in, just the attitude the players take out with them onto the pitch. Uh, against us tonight, uh, against Wilson and the forwards, is the man that all the Jordies love, Jordan Pickwick. Uh, I mean, you, you ought to be careful with what's coming up with Halloween and um, Bonfire Night on Jordy Land, but seriously, he comes into this game 
We've never got on too well. He works the crowd as well as the crowd working him, and he does spend an awful lot of time on kicking the ball out, something like uh, 10 minutes, I think. Um, so he's an uh, time waster as well. But he is, without question, the number one England goalkeeper in Gareth Southgate's mind. Uh, and he's playing against uh, Nick Pope tonight, of course, who is the uh, trying to push him for his place. So it's an extra incentive. But um, I don't feel that Pickford will get the greatest reception from the crowd tonight, Malcolm. I hope not. And I certainly hope he doesn't get a good reception from the Newcastle side as well. Um, personally, um, I, I, I would take Pope any day ahead of uh, Pickford if I'm the, uh, the manager. Um, but uh, but it, it, I'm not so sure that uh, Pope is going to get enough action to show him his, his um, skills off tonight. So, uh, yeah, but you know, and, and, and hopefully that uh, Pickford is overworked. Uh, the interesting thing, uh, Everton, they had a rebuild. There was an awful lot of rebuild that needed to be done. And they've tried to put a wall in front of Pickford, haven't they? Bringing in Cody and uh, the Burnley lad, two new centre halves, who in the main, and I know it didn't work down in Spurs because it's 2 nil, but we'll find out how hard it is against Son and uh, Kane this weekend. Hopefully we'll have a lot more success than Everton uh, and I think we will. Um, but that makes him a bit more resilient, Martin, with the two centre-halves in, the way they put the rest of the team together and they keep it, they're a bit more resilient than they were. Yeah, without any shadow of doubt. And, uh, and the resilience, it, it, it's, it abounds throughout the whole side, I think. And, the mental attitude is so, so different now. It's an absolute joy to be in the ground. And I'm sure you all uh, must, you must feel a million dollars walking into St. James's Park. Whereas um, two years ago, you'd go in with your head bowed before the game. Now, and at the end of it as well, more than, more than likely. Yeah, the interesting thing, just talking about the team tonight, it's difficult enough to, to guess Eddie Howe's team is under normal circumstances because he doesn't like giving things away at three match. For example, down in Manchester United, we didn't know that before we got the team, an hour before kickoff, we didn't know that Maxi had had a relapse, we didn't know that Willie had been ill all week and therefore was only on the subs bench. So you don't know these things. But he has already said that he will try to shuffle the path in the way that he can when he hasn't got Maxi and, and Isaac because it's three games in eight days. I guess if he's looking to make changes, the three you can make, you can bring Target in for Bernard left back if you want. You can bring Willett back into centre midfield and the rest there, and uh, locks that perhaps. And you've got Fraser who could play in one of the wide positions if he wants to make changes. And he has said that he does to a certain extent. Your feeling on possible changes, Malcolm, that you would make yourself if you were making any? The way they're playing and the, and the way the results are coming, I, 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 I'm always loath to make changes for the sake of it. Um, if people are playing well, then uh, stick with them. And, and I was a little surprised that after the last home game, um, to see at Old Trafford, that he continued with Byrne at left back. Because I thought that that last home game, Byrne, was, he had a right stinker. But, but he stuck with him. And, and, and good for Eddie Howe in doing that, and good for Byrne, because he, he responded. And I didn't see him make a solitary mistake against Man U. Um, and, and, and so, players, players want to play all the time, you know, so as a manager, when you've got a bunch of players who, who really want to be out there playing, you've got to have a bloody good reason to stick them on the bench. Would you not spread the load? Would you not spread the load, Malcolm, three games in eight days? Uh, if a, if a manager said I'm spreading the load to me, I would have told him where to go. 
you know, because uh, three games in eight days, it's only two games a week. You know, it's averaging over the season, it's averaging two games a week. And I would much rather play a league game than be doing four or five days training. You know, the, playing the matches is far more fun than, uh, than being out in a training ground sort of running your balls off. <laughs> I mean, the difficult years as well, if you're thinking of spreading the load, when do you spread it? Because, you know, tonight you've got to win. You've got to put out a, a side that gives you the best opportunity to win because Man, Man United was a good result. And yes, we've had too many draws this season, but the two draws I thought were terrific were against the two Manchester clubs. To draw with Man City, to draw with Man United, that'll do for me. Yes, Bournemouth and Crystal Palace at home wasn't so clever, but we didn't have Bruno and we didn't have Wilson, I think. Uh, and certainly Bruno wasn't fit. Um, so you've got to be careful. Let's have predictions tonight. Um, I think we're both going to say Newcastle to win. It's just how many. And without Isaac and Max here on the bench, I'm going to go 2 0. You, Malcolm? Well, um, I, I should be very, very disappointed if, if Everton get shots on goal. I really will. Having seen their inability at, at, against Spurs, and they are now playing the defence with the best record. So, um, I, I can't see Everton's story, in all honesty, if the defence really do their job as they have been doing. Um, at the other end, I don't know, I think it's just a move for goals. Almiron and, and Wilson. Wilson, he will be annoyed that he hasn't scored for two games. He will be really annoyed. And so, uh, uh, I, I, I think that he's going to change that. I'm going to go uh, one better than you, John, and I'm going to go for Newcastle to win. 3-0. Excellent, excellent. Um, we're wrapping up there. It's been wonderful tonight to have a dear friend of mine, Malcolm, with me because uh, he's coming at the last minute. We were gonna, I was going to be with Lee Clark because Ando uh, is live on air with BBC Radio Newcastle. But Lee Clark, there was a bell this morning. His son's just got an unexpected call into the Liverpool first team squad for tonight's game against Spurs. So on the on the odd chance that he might get onto the pitch and play in the Premier League, Lee obviously wants to be in the stand at Anfield, which is why he's there tonight. And I wish him all the very, very best. And I said to him, if your lad wants to kick, how he can, we join him, no object whatsoever, if he just happens not to be fit for Sunday. Would you put your hands together? Thank Malcolm McDonald, good friend, lovely man. Worth listening to every time. God bless. Enjoy the match tonight, and I'll see you at the next Thursday. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks so much.